Hey guys, what's up? So it is day 14 of using my continuous glucose monitor. I made a more in-depth video of <laughs> basically explaining everything about this. I will link that or I'll put that uh, in the in the corner somewhere for you to click on so you can kind of see all the nitty-gritty details of what this thing is all about But at 14 days it stops working. So you have to replace it. So I have my other uh, Sensor that I need to put on hello. I am being texted uh, So I'm gonna show you I've had some questions about like if this hurts uh, if it's in my arm and stuff like that so I wanted you to see what it looks like on the other side when I take this off and you can kind of see like what it is that is in your arm. It is just a small little filament that I, I literally don't, I don't feel anything, but I'm about to take this off because it is no longer working. This might hurt a little because I am hairy. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Like a Band-Aid, right? Ah! Nothing like a good arm wax. Jesus. So, there's where it was for 14 days. Um, along with my arm hair, you can see, hopefully, let's see if it'll focus. Let me try to focus on this so you can see exactly. This is the little tiny filament that was in my arm. Crazy, right? Can't feel it, this is what was monitoring my glucose. Um, so this is the old sensor. I'm gonna go wash off my arm before I put the new one on and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, now that I've kind of scrubbed the shit out of my arm to get the rest of that adhesive off, uh, I've got my new applicator and uh, monitor sensor and some alcohol swabs so I could uh, clean off the area that I will put the new sensor on. Last time I did the sensor, I was not really paying attention and I kind of put it in an awkward spot, but I want to aim for like right here <laughs> this time. Um, cool. So while well, that dries, uh, to get started with this, you just kind of twist the top off of this. Twisty, twisty, there we go. So uh, this is the applicator. This is the sensor. Oh shit. I'm just gonna peel this off. Then you just line up this dark mark right here with the other, where is it on this? Oh, with this right here. So line that up. Then I'm gonna push this down on the, the desk right here. Here, click. Now it's ready to go into my arm. If you could see here, there is a needle uh, in the applicator. But as soon as the needle, it's just to insert the filament into your arm so it retracts instantly. You literally do not feel any, you don't, you don't feel a thing. It's kind of, I mean, I'm used to giving myself injections, so this is the tiniest little thing, but the first time I put it on, I was kind of like, uh, I'm gonna feel this. That's, I'm not a fan of needles no matter what size. I don't know how I inject myself each week, but this was slightly nervous making, but, um, yeah, I legit did not feel it. So let's do this. Uh, see if I can actually aim for the right spot this time. Let's see. So you wanna put it somewhere, like not directly on the muscle, but kind of like below it. So I'm kind of like aiming right there. If I fuck this up, hopefully. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's go right. Going to firmly press till you hear a click. and I didn't feel a thing. Voila, done. Pretty simple. So now I'm set for the next 14 days uh, and I'm gonna go over a little bit of what I have learned so far. The biggest thing I've learned so far is that stress can affect my glucose levels. The craziest thing was that in the beginning, I had my usual breakfast, which is my waffles, my banana protein waffles, and that seemed to spike my blood sugar more than any other of my meals. But then, instead of changing it up, I kind of just wanted to monitor to see how my body um, adjusted to it with other outside factors, and it comes come to find out that the more stressed I am, 
the higher my glucose spikes when I have carbs. Uh, so if I sleep more, if I am less stressed, then generally the higher carb meals are rated higher. So when I first started doing this, my breakfast, my protein waffles were being ranked at about a three within the app because it kind of like, it grades your meals from like a one to 10 scale of like one to five is basically not so great. And then five to six, you kind of want to maybe think about doing things differently. And then like seven above, you're pretty good with that meal. So my breakfast was a three, it was pretty bad. But then as time went on, as I had more sleep and was more rested and less stressed, the better number rating that I got on my breakfast. So right now I've gotten between a seven and an eight for multiple days in a row for the same breakfast. So I found that to be really fascinating. It's crazy how much stress can affect your body and even your, your blood glucose levels. So that's been probably the most interesting thing for me so far is to see how that affects everything. Uh, I've also learned just how timing your carbs differently could be a pretty good option. Whether like if you, I actually do better with carbs in the evening versus like midday. Sweet potato uh, spikes my blood glucose more than bananas. Uh, so that was also something very interesting. Butternut squash doesn't really do anything uh, towards my blood glucose levels. I'm still learning, trying out different foods to see what spikes it, what doesn't. Trying foods on their own or trying foods with a mixture of more fiber and fat content with it so it digests slower. So there's just like little tweaks that you can learn how to kind of keep things stable. And also there's something called like the uh, the dawn effect. So at night when I'm dead asleep, my blood glucose is pretty low. And then as the morning start, like the sun starts coming up, as I'm start to like wake up, my blood glucose comes back up in the morning. So it's, you kind of see the rhythm of your body. So it's really, really interesting uh, to see how that works. And I'm such a nerd and it just makes me smile talking about it. So that's basically it right now. Just experimenting with different foods and seeing how my body reacts, seeing how it reacts with stress, seeing how foods act alone. And uh, yeah, it's, did I mention that white rice was a rocket ship? for my blood glucose levels. That was the interesting thing. Um, I had white rice with some fish and that was what spiked my blood sugar the highest so far. So white rice, that's, it's understandable. It's very easily digestible, very high in carbs. And there's, there's no fiber in there. So there's nothing to slow it down. It's just gonna bam, spike it up. And the more active I am, I notice the better my levels are so activity diet it just really shows you how it all ties in together you know wellness health they're all important all of these factors play a role in your metabolic health and i'm going to stop talking because i'm rambly and um i'll go over this more in the next 14 days with some more videos and stuff like that if that is something you're interested in if you have any questions uh, feel free to leave them down below and also make sure to check the other video I did that's more in depth of how everything works just so you're not confused if you haven't watched any of these yet you're kind of thinking like what the hell is going on so watch those videos and uh, thanks for watching guys peace out I'll see you next time